Hello, welcome back to Legal Brain. In today's class, I'm going to discuss yet another important area, and that is contracts of guarantee. An exam point of view, uh, in which I'll be explaining what is contracts of guarantee, uh, what section speaks about that, what is the concept, and so on. So try to understand. Uh, first of all, I would like to give you a definition for contract of guarantee. Uh, by virtue of section 126 of Indian Contract Act 1872, which gives a definition for contract of guarantee and describes what is contract of guarantee. So by virtue of section 126, it says that contract of guarantee is a contract to perform the promise or discharge the liability of a third person in case of default. Uh, I'll give you a simple example. I'll make you understand what is contract of guarantee. Uh, it's a very simple concept, which has mainly three parties, principal debtor, creditor and surety. So principal debtor is a person who receives money or borrows money from the creditor. And creditor is a person who gives the money to the principal debtor. And surety is the person who is giving the assurance to the creditor that if on time, if the principal debtor makes a default or he doesn't make you, uh, makes the payment, uh, he doesn't even, you know, makes the payment or he doesn't even pay you, then I will make the payment. So it is like surety is giving an assurance to the uh, creditor that if principal debtor doesn't uh, gives the payment on time, he will give the payment. And after making the payment, the surety will be having a right. He is having a right to subrogation, which is mentioned again in section 114, that the surety can step into the shoes of the creditor and he can just act like the creditor and he can just receive the money he paid uh, from the principle uh you know a uh, debtor so this is the concept and next i'm going to discuss the essentials of contract of guarantee i've made it very short and simple uh first one is there are mainly three parties i have told you principal debtor creditor and surety second point is that there are many three separate contracts like you know between principal debtor creditor and surety there are three contracts third point is that the secondary liability of the surety which is mentioned under section 128 and says that uh, the liability of the surety is coextensive with that of the principal debtor if the principal debtor is liable, then only the surety will be liable. If the principal debtor doesn't have any liability, automatically the surety uh, will also get discharged from his right. And next is existence of principal uh, debt. There should be a debt, okay? Like the creditor should have given money to the principal debtor. And there is no need of separate consideration in this concept and there should not be any uh, concealment or there should not be any misrepresentation or, you know, hiding of anything in this particular concept. And contractual capacity of parties are also important. There should be a major. So these are the essentials of a uh, contract of uh, guarantee. And now when it comes to the liability part, uh, the liability of the surety is coextensive with that of the principal debtor, as I have told you, mentioned under 128 of Indian Contract Act uh, 1872, uh, and says that whenever the principal debtor is liable, the surety will be liable. And it's always secondary. The liability of surety will always be secondary. And when the creditor recovers a part of his loan from the property of the principal debtor, then uh, when the liability of the principal debtor reduces, at the same time, the liability of surety will also get reduced and now if the you know if due to some reason the principal debtor cannot be held liable still the surety can be held liable in following situation for example first point is pd is short form of principal debtor don't get confused uh, if principal debtor is a minor suppose he's a minor person or principal debtor is declared as insolvent or if liability of the principal debtor has become time barred or if the creditor delays in filing a suit against the debtor, if these are the situations, still in this situation, the surety can be held liable. So this is an important uh, area, and please uh, make a note of uh, this area. So moreover, in certain cases, the surety can restrict or limit his liability, like discharge of surety from liability. Uh, I, I'm going to discuss in the next class, so you can just check it out, Legal Brain, and you know, classes available on a discharge of surety from liability. And the liability of surety commences with a uh, default of the principal debtor. When the liability of the surety starts or when it commences, the liability of surety starts the moment when the principal debtor makes a default. That means once when the principal debtor doesn't make the payment to the creditor, that point, the liability of surety comes to comes into the, uh, you know, uh, you know, it starts. And the creditor has the right to sue the surety even without taking action against the principal debtor. So it's, it's up to creditor. The creditor is having complete freedom to initiate an action against the surety uh, without even taking against the principal uh, debtor. Next, I'm going to discuss about the rights of surety. So there are really two set of rights. First is right against debtor. 
setting his right against creditor. So under rights against debtor, he's having right of uh, subrogation. I've told you that is section 140, once when concept meaning is, once when the surety is making the payment to creditor for principal debtor, for example, uh, like uh, I am the surety, okay? And I am giving an assurance to the creditor that if principal debtor doesn't uh, pays you back, I will pay you, okay? So the principal debtor is supposed to pay 10,000 rupees to creditor, which is due. And now I have to pay that 10,000 rupees to the creditor, okay? That is the concept of short. And after making this payment to the creditor, there is right to subrogation for me. Like I can step into the shoes of creditor. That means just like a creditor, now I can ask the 10,000 rupees money from the principal debtor to pay it back to me because I paid it for the uh, principal debtor. I paid it to creditor. So this is right of subrogation. Next is right to be indemnified. If you know indemnified, which means making the loss good. I have discussed uh, contracts of indemnity uh, in uh, another class. You can just go and watch uh, the class of uh, contracts of indemnity. So, which means basically making the loss good. If you have suffered any loss, you can get back the money. Next is right against creditor. The first is right to security. The next point is right to get information about debtor's con uh, conduct. Then right to set up if he has to settle down any, uh, you know, his own amount from the creditor. So, these are the rights which is available for the surety uh, in two heads. One is against the debtor, against the creditor. And next is a right to claim contribution. For example, uh, there is a concept called cost sureties, which means there are two sureties, okay? Uh, so there is principal debtor, creditor, and two sureties. If that is the concept, uh, this liability of cost sureties will be joined and separate. That means they'll be having like joint liability. Jointly, they will be liable to make the Payment. For example, uh, myself and one more person, we two, for we, we both are like uh, cost sureties. And now we are supposed to pay 1 lakh rupees uh, for the principal debtor to the creditor. That means there should be an equal contribution. I should pay 50,000 rupees. Uh, my cost surety should pay 50,000 rupees. So we both should contribute equally and should give, it, give 1 lakh rupees to the creditor. Uh, if that is not the situation. For example, only I have money at that time. I have 1 lakh rupees. My cost surety doesn't have 50,000 to contribute that. Then I can make that 1 lakh rupee payment to the creditor. But after the payment, I have the right to get that 50,000 share contribution from my cost surety. So that is the meaning of contribution. So right to claim uh, contribution is there for cost surety. And section 146 clearly says about this and says that cost surety is liable to contribute equally. There should be equal sharing. And in case of cost sureties of equal amount or in case of cost sureties for different sums or in case of discharge uh, cost sureties, these are the rights which is falling under section 146. So in today's class, I've discussed about contract of guarantee in a nutshell, which section, how it works, who are the parties, essentials and so on. So if you have any doubt, do comment below and I'll be responding and thank you so much.